Hello, my name is Lisa Anderson, and I'm a mechanical engineer here at Burn Design Lab. My presentation is going to be on the selection of appropriate machinery um, for a stove factory upgrade in Uganda. So a little bit about who we are. Um, Burn Design Lab is located on Bashan Island, um, which is just outside of <laughs> Seattle, Washington. Um, and we focus on the design of cook stoves and their manufacturing processes to increase accessibility to clean cooking technologies in both low and middle income countries. So a little bit about what sets us apart. Um, we focus on engaging local manufacturers and users during this process. Um, and we also test and develop production practices um, appropriate for particular factories. And that's something that I'm gonna focus on um, in, this, in this presentation. So this approach both um, preserves jobs, capitals, capital and um, knowledge within the communities that we serve. So a little bit about this project, the Lyra Factory Improvement Project um, is in partnership with the International Lifeline Fund to triple uh, stove production in their factory located in Lyra, Uganda. Um, it began in 2020 when they were making around 5,000 stoves per month. And the goal in the future is to make 15,000 stoves per month um, without increasing the labor force. So uh, they primarily make metal jacketed charcoal stoves like the smart home um, that can be seen on the right there. Um, and this is done with skilled and semi-skilled artisans um, with all manual tools um, and manual practices. Um, and there's a labor force of uh, over 125 people working at the factory. Um, so this, obviously, there's many facets to um, increasing uh, their production capacity. Um, and my colleague Emilio talks um, about more the human-centered design aspect and infrastructure improvements that are going on at the factory um, in a separate presentation. But this presentation is going to talk primarily about um, the introduction of machinery and modern manufacturing methods. Um, to, in, to um, make this goal. So this project started with a visit by my colleague, Charlie Sellers in November of 2020. The intention of this trip was to observe the current happenings of the factory and see what we could learn from them. So this resulted in many notes, pictures, and videos um, that were all documented and shared back with us um, who were unable to join. Um, so at Burn Design Lab, much of the documentation raised a lot of questions like, how is this being cut? Or what's the process of building this stove? Um, and so with the videos and Charlie's help and communication with folks on the ground, um, I was able to piece together um, uh, all this information into a spreadsheet. Um, so uh, this allowed us to visually see all the operations that went on um, in a given part and the respective time it took. So such as measuring and marking, it took this much time cutting, it took this much time for each individual part, and then also how said parts got put together in an assembly. Um, so this gave us a good idea of where the production bottleneck points were and what machinery could make the largest impact on production rates. So once we had a good sense of what operations we should prioritize, the first step was to understand what the requirements and specifications for the given factory were. So for example, um, the Lyra factory has pretty unreliable electricity. Um, and so that meant that all the machinery needed to be uh, manually operated. Um, and so then the second step was to search for equipment that would work. Um, and so uh, 
that means both building equipment, so that's a lever press uh, there that it can be used to close the jacket seam, um, or buying equipment, so that is a table shear there, um, which we'll, I'll talk about a little bit later too. Um, and then our th the third step was to evaluate. So um, at Burn Design Lab, we like to try things out. Um, and so we obtained a circle shear and refurbished it um, with stop systems that could work in high production settings. Um, and that worked pretty well. But of course, you also run into things that don't work. So for example, we obtained a bar folder um, and found that that was a little bit too hard to use for a high production setting. Um, so we ended up scrapping that. And that's, that's what you learn from evaluating yourself. So one area of improvement I had identified earlier um, as a huge time saver was the marking operation here on the left. Um, it would take factory workers like four minutes to measure and mark out all the parts for a given stove. Um, so with the introduction of a table shear, it was possible to eliminate the need for all the marking. Um, and instead, you could set up a pre-measured back gauge um, that would allow one to line up the sheet metal and make a cut. Um, but another example of learning through trying, um, because we found that the, the sheet metal was a little bit too thin and ended up drooping um, and never actually ended up hitting the back gauge. Um, so that wasn't something that we could use. Um, and so uh, we came up with another back gauge prototype for high yield manufacturing, a uh, new backstop system that could eliminate this problem. Um, and from this, we could get timings for cutting out the pieces using the machinery um, and to see how those timings would influence future production. Um, so this was something that I could then feed into my, my spreadsheet that I talked about earlier um, and come up with uh, both um, the future process and then also seeing it next to the current process. So above um, is the 2020 factory operation process um, and this goes from sheet metal to the part and then how the part is then put into the assembly um, and documents all the different operations that go into that. Um, and then the 2021 proposed factory operation process is something that we've identified with machinery um, and how, how that operation would go. So this is obviously you can't read all the words, but it's a good visualization to see how um, how it goes from sheet metal to stove. So the current status, um, our table shear and circle shear are in transit to Uganda now, and the video on the right shows us creating those. Um, and once they're there, we hope to train factory employees um, in using these and maintaining this machinery. Um, and obviously observations will shape the decisions on the second round of mach machines that we'll have. Um, so the table back shear gauge that I mentioned previously is, is in development and we hope to send over um, with this machinery and test in, in field soon. Um, and then we're still looking at machinery that would assist in hemming and flanging operations um, in the stove uh, and then implementing a second shipment of machinery when ready. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Um, you can learn more about the ILF Factory Improvement Project at Burn Design Lab's website um, and stay up to date on all the exciting work that we're doing through so social media. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we love hearing from others and, and what you all are doing, um, and it's a really exciting place to be. Um, so thank you so much.